So Elimination Chamber, a Raw brand exclusive pay-per-view, is coming up Sunday, live, 8 p.m. Eastern, on the WWE Network. <laughs> and that's what it feels like. It just feels like a jack-off of a show. I'll be honest, about a week ago, I didn't even realize Elimination Chamber was coming up on Sunday. For some strange reason, I actually thought the next pay-per-view was a SmackDown-branded one. Maybe that's shame on me. But the real truth of the matter is, why the hell did I have any reason to care? And most certainly, it's not like the WWE gave you much of a reason to care over the past couple of weeks. Like, I really had to scramble to think of what the actual match card was for Sunday show. And even then, I still ultimately had to go to the WWE website to actually find out what the official match card was because I had absolutely no clue. And once I actually saw the piss-poor match card that was put together, I completely understood why I cared so little for this Sunday's special event live on the WWE Network. You got five main card matches, a contract signing, and I think just one announced kickoff show match you know if anything one thing good that can come out of ending that incessant brand split or at least these stupid brand exclusive pay-per-views is maybe we will get shows that will have a couple more matches that actually freaking matter in the grand scheme of things as really who cares about the show because you feel like so many things are already predetermined. So many things are already set in motion. It feels like you already know what's coming before it comes. And even when you don't, you don't care. Like, honestly, Gallows and Anderson, the Balor Club versus the Miz Taraj on the kickoff show. Cool. Axel and Bo Dallas got a kickoff show match. That's awesome. Maybe Bo can float his brother some money to help pay his child support. But the main card, like I legit didn't realize that Titus Worldwide actually had a title shot against the bar on Sunday. I didn't even know. I didn't even realize. And even like watching the segments on television, it still didn't dawn on me that this was actually a thing. This is actually something that was going to happen. It feels like the bar will just retain and you're probably going with what, maybe bar and ba Who the hell knows? That Raw Tag Team Division is trash. T-R-A-S-H. Trash. Woken Matt Hardy versus Bray Wyatt. You have already seen this match several times on television, including once on the Raw 25th Anniversary Show where uh, Matt Hardy jobbed out to Bray in no time whatsoever. So what the hell is the point of this match? What the hell is the purpose of this match? Last I checked, there's absolutely no stipulation to this match. There is no significance to this match. There is nothing to make this seem different than all the other times that Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt have already wrestled. There is no purpose, no meaning, no reason why the hell would I care. Of course, WWE, when you look at this match between Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt, you see the epitome of... Characters that should, in theory, have potential. Characters that should have some promise. Characters that should be able to do you something. But, of course, because you're the WWE, and remember, hashtag WWE ruins everything, they've made Bray Wyatt irrelevant crap, and they quickly did their best to make Woken Matt Hardy irrelevant crap. To the surprise, I think, of absolutely no damn body. Like... Is there legitimately a single person alive that is actually interested in this match whatsoever? I didn't think so. Like, who cares? I'd rather them just have a laugh off in the middle of the ring. That would be more compelling. Real talk. Ronda Rousey's contract signing. Does anybody think that this is going to go off without a hitch? Of course not. You figure at some point in time at least Stephanie McMahon is going to be involved, potentially Triple H is going to be involved, and who knows who else could also potentially be involved. I'm sorry, but the WWE's got a long, long way to go to make me give 
the tiniest of fucks about Ronda Rousey being with WWE. And I think this is one of these things that people within the wrestling bubble think this is a much bigger deal than the reality of what it actually is. Now, granted, the way you're featuring this makes it seem like she is indeed going to be in a big money match at WrestleMania. And if you're going to do that, and it's going to be The Rock just throwing it out there, and it's going to be her and The Rock versus Hunter and Stephanie, then at this point in time, you might as well damn main event mania with that match. And I'm serious, you might as well main event it with that match. But contract signings on pay-per-view I'm not usually huge on you know you had her come out in that stupid way at the Royal Rumble and then she hasn't been seen for almost a month and this is how we're gonna see her I can't wait to see Ronda Rousey overact I can't wait to see Ronda Rousey act like she has no charisma because that's right she doesn't it's gonna be a big challenge for WWE to make her interesting a big challenge Anyways, moving on. Asuka versus Nia Jax. The stipulation being, if Nia Jax beats Asuka, she gets in the Raw Women's Championship match at WrestleMania. So at least you could say this is a match that has some purpose, some meaning, some significance behind it, some type of stakes for these two to actually be wrestling. Not anything really on the line technically for Asuka other than you would say if she chose to go after Alexa Bliss, which last time I checked still wasn't officially announced or decided, then she wouldn't want to have somebody else in the match with her. Okay, we're reaching a little bit, but kayfabe-wise, it's something. There's at least a purpose for this. But I look at this, and it just seems really stupid. And here's why. If Asuka wins, then what was the point? If Asuka wins, who's to say she still wouldn't go to SmackDown anyways and face Charlotte for that belt? If Asuka loses, then, similar to what you did with Charlotte a couple of years ago, you had her undefeated streak ended for no real purpose or no real reason. If Asuka loses, she's still the Royal Rumble winner. She still gets a title match at WrestleMania. So why the hell do this? This is really weird. I want to know what they're going to do to get them out of this, themselves out of this kind of creative uh, quagmire they created here. Are they going to do some type of double DQ, double count out finish? That actually feels like the only way you can go. That way you protect the Asuka undefeated streak. That way you give a clear cut path to Nia to getting a title match at WrestleMania, which is what the hell she needs, which is what the hell she deserves. If you don't like it, eat shit. Hopefully the match is at least good. But that's a hope. That's a big hope. And, of course, we're talking about the women of WWE, the women on Raw. Once again, they're making history for the 300th fucking time. Ooh, the first ever women's elimination chamber match. And look at the star-studded lineup you've got here. Sasha Banks, Bayley, Mandy Rose, Sonya Deville, Mickey James, and Alexa Bliss. Like, it is so bad. When I went to the website to look at the six people actually in this match... It took me like two minutes to realize who the hell Sonya Deville and Mandy Rose were and that they were actually in this match. Making history for the sake of making history is stupid. I'm sorry, it just is. And the women's division of Raw has nowhere near the amount of talent or star power to have this type of Elimination Chamber match. Now, surely those that enjoyed the hell out of the women's Rumble match last month are going to flame away at me on the comments section with their flaming keyboard fingers of fire being engaged, and that's whatever. But I look at this match and I'm like, yeah, it's going to feel like one big massive yawn. Ooh, Sasha Banks and Bailey. Are they going to split? Are they not going to split? Ooh, who gives a crap so that way they can set up to a match on the pre-show? Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville, they're in a title match at a pay-per-view this quickly. Whatever. And Mickey James matters so little that it doesn't matter that she's in this match. And does anybody think at this point anybody other than Alexa Bliss is winning this match and retaining her title? So again, it's one of these matches where you feel like you already know the outcome because you probably do. And that brings us to the men's Elimination Chamber match. It's a number one contenders match. It's Roman Reigns and the six guys they ain't winning this shit. 
Now, it's bad enough going into this, knowing that for a year the WWE has been angling towards Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar Part 2 at WrestleMania 34. It's even worse now that you realize that you are this close to this being a realization. Then, when you factor in that ridiculous, almost two-hour-long gauntlet match on Raw, that I'm sure, as boring and as lazy as it was to me, is going to be better than this match here, why in the hell would I be excited for this match when these seven guys wrestled a much longer match six days before? It is dumb. They should have just put the number one contendership on the line there, because why the hell not? Now, maybe we will get a pleasant turn of events, a pleasant surprise, and maybe a Braun Strowman wins. Ain't happening. Maybe Seth Rollins wins. Maybe him and Roman tie. Maybe they do something. Who the hell knows? But when you look at this, like you've got John Cena talking about he doesn't have a clear path to WrestleMania. Oh, shut the hell up. Like, who in the hell would believe that? Seriously. This just feels like a Roman Reigns coronation. This just feels like two plus hours of wasted time and bullshit to get to the thing that you know has been coming for a year. And yes, sometimes just because you know it's coming doesn't automatically make it bad. But for a company, for a brand, for a product that badly needs some spontaneity, that needs to shake some shit up, that needs to do some things differently, the last thing we need is the type of finish that you could see coming a year ago. I mean, when you, I'm just being honest here. And, and you could complain about me complaining, and that is cool. Complain about me complaining, then I will complain about your complaining about me complaining. It's whatever. But really, honestly, you look at this match card. You look at this show. Why the hell would anybody be excited about this? What the hell would make you think that this is going to be cool? Save a sp surprise appearance by the fucking rock or somebody. This show is going to be shit. Boring as bricks. Because again, that women's freaking elimination chamber match is severely lacking in star power. The men's elimination chamber match certainly is lacking in star power. It feels like a bunch of mid-carters and a couple of guys worth the crap if you're being honest. And again, you feel like you already know the finish. And it's not the finish that a lot of us want to see. And it's not even just the thing of it being Roman Reigns and what it represents and skipty skip and whoop de woo It is just the thing of, with WWE, sure you can sell it as a coming full circle. Sure you can sit there and tell, sell it as one of these things where, by God, this has been three years in the making. But I'm tired of the big featured main event type of WrestleMania matches a lot of times being matches we've seen before. Why can't we do different? Why can't we do new? Why can't we do fresh? I ask too much. But it will be an absolute miracle if I don't come here on YouTube Sunday night after Elimination Chamber and crap all over this show. And certainly, most likely because unless there's an 11th hour and 59th minute and 59th second change in WWE's opinion, Roman Reigns is winning that Elimination Chamber match. And when he does, I'll at least get some comfort and some security in knowing that a lot of you are probably going to rage like I will. Granted, maybe for different reasons. But since it's Roman Reigns that would win, you would then be pissed. And for one night, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. We can all get along, sing Kumbaya, and crap on the WWE for this stupid-ass, lame, predictable garbage that they're putting out there Sunday. And tickets are still available. If you go to the website, tickets are still available. Look at the show. Look at what you expect to come. Is that any fucking surprise at all?